Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about Microsoft PIM, Privileged Identity Management. But first, my name is Mark Connolly and I'm a Cloud Cybersecurity Architect for Imperion and we help businesses all over the Midwest with their Microsoft 365 and cybersecurity challenges. So what is Microsoft PIM? What is Privileged Identity Management? Privileged Identity Management is the idea that you don't necessarily need to be an administrator 24-7. So maybe you don't necessarily need to be as high of an administrator 24-7. Uh, we'll take global administrator and owner and contributor uh, roles on Azure Resources and Azure Active Directory as an example. Global administrator gives you a lot of power. It also you know, makes it to where you can go do anything you want in the tenant for the most part and it just works. Uh, same thing with owner on the Azure subscriptions. If you have owner, you can do whatever you want. If you have contributor, you can pretty much do whatever you want. But if you're a server guy, do you really need that much? Do you really need it 24 seven? Probably not. And if somebody got a hold of your account and there was ever any issues, they would have a lot more privileges than they needed just because you sit in that group all the time or you sit in that role all the time. Uh, so what privilege identity management gives us the ability to do is to make people eligible and to, an establish, uh, and to establish an elevation process associated with a given role. Uh, so to get started, you got to go to your portal.azure.com and you need to navigate to the privilege identity management. You can also access this through Entra, which I should probably do that because that's the new way that we're supposed to be doing things, right? And go to identity governance and go to privilege identity management. So Azure AD roles are going to be out of the box. Um, you can go in here, click roles. Uh, you can go into global administrator. Yeah, global administrator. And we can go to our role settings right here. So in our role settings, this is where we're going to define uh, the requirements for activation. So as you see, this one right here is activation of eight hours. It requires MFA on activation. It requires justification on activation. There's no approvers though. Um, and then, you know, the assignment notifications for when different people elevate to that role. So we can create the settings and give people kind of a self-service process to be able to elevate their permissions when they need to. Uh, exchange administrators are a great example because you know, they need to be an exchange administrator 24 seven because they're managing your mail system. But every six months or so, Microsoft comes out with a patch and they need to be enterprise administrators while they do the patch. They probably need enterprise administrator for two or three hours while they administer it. They don't necessarily need enterprise administrators 24 seven. So that would be a good example of an elevation use case. So we can leave them in exchange administrators 24 seven. Then they have the ability on when they do their patch cycle, they can click activate elevate their permissions, they can get the higher level permissions, do their job, and as when the time expiration wears off, they automatically get removed from that role. So Azure AD roles are out of the box with that. Uh, but for Azure resource roles, we actually need to go down here to Azure resource, and we need to onboard these to PIM. So as you can see, I don't have anything in here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to discover resources. I'm gonna select all of our resources. And I'm going to click Manage Resources. And actually, I want to do this for management groups too, not just subscriptions. Let me select Management Groups too. There we go. Let's go ahead and click Manage Resources. And what this is going to do is it's going to create the managed identities and things in the background and update the RBAC tables so that the system assigned managed identity from Azure can actually perform these role changes for us in the background when the timers expire, when people elevate, etc. So let's go up here to groups. Because I personally recommend managing all these different PIM levels with groups. It makes things a lot easier to manage. You can just add and remove users from groups as you need to. Um, if you have any type of account management systems that you know control what groups people get for a given role in the company, you can pipe those into those profiles as well. We 
Right, so in this example, we have a global management group and we have an enterprise shared services management group. And I'm going to be in the owner assigned role. And then uh, Wade Wilson, uh, my you know fictitious character and my tenant, he is going to be in contributor assigned, but he's going to be an owner eligible. So the reason that you would do this is because you know, there's some Azure stuff where maybe DevOps or something, they need to be the owner of the subscription in order to do it. Maybe it has to do with some billing operations. They need to be the owner. Um, but maybe they only do that once every three months or you know once a month or once every six months, like, like I said earlier. They don't necessarily need to be an administrator 24-7. So we're going to make Wade eligible to activate the owner, um, but he's going to be a contributor by default, so his active role will be contributor. And then we'll walk through the elevation process after we set it up to show how he would elevate himself in PIM, do the MFA, and gain his permissions. Um, so in PIM, what we need to do is actually bind those groups uh, to the roles themselves and update the settings for those roles. So now we have our Azure resources onboarded. So we'll go to our global management group. And click down here to roles. All right, so let's go down to the owner role. And we see eligible assignments and we see active assignments. So I have a group for this one. That's Azure MG owner assigned. So we're gonna select this group. And then it's assigned, so we're gonna go to active. Um, and by default, this role does not allow permanent active assignments, which is why I'm getting this timetable here. I do have to add justification. Uh, we'll say binding group for RBAC. Um, and then I can go into the role settings and actually make that to where permanent assignment is actually eligible. All right, so let's go to settings. And let's edit this. Allow permanent active assignments. Update that. So now we have the group assigned. Let's go ahead and update that time window. assignment already exists. Not permanently. Okay, I guess let's remove it and re-edit. Right, now that we have the role settings correct. Say active, permanently assigned, binding group to RBAC. And we're going to assign that. Let's go back. Now we're going to go to our enterprise shared services management group. So in this one, we're going to fix the settings first before we actually assign the role. And 
On this one, we want to require MFA on activation, and we also want to require provers. So on activation, require Azure MFA, require justification, require approval. All right, so the, even after they elevate, they're only going to be eligible for owner permissions for eight hours. They have to MFA, they have to get an approval, and provide a justification. So let's go to the assignment, and we're going to make this an eligible assignment. We're going to do permanent. And then default notifications will work because I'm an admin. So. To update, now we need contributor. All right, so we should see that now. And we can see over here, if I drag this over, what the alerts look like. So when you activate PIM, anytime that there's a role change, it's the default notifications are going to go to the global administrators. So as you can see, we assigned contributor assigned group to the contributor role on the enterprise shared services resource group, and that is a management group. So that's what the notifications look like. And if we pivot over here, and enter and we go check out Wade Wilson's profile, we should see that his permissions are effective now. Here we go. Click on Azure role assignments from his user profile. flip through your subscriptions so we can see on the Enterprise Shared Services Management Group he is a contributor. He's not an owner. So if we switch over here to an in private window. There we go. And I'm, I don't have an administrative role when I'm logging into the portal, so I did not have the MFA. So now I'm in here as Wade Wilson, maybe later. Pretty familiar with the portal. Let's just search for PIM up here from the top. So from the user view, I can click My Roles. Oh, that's Azure AD Roles. Here we go, Azure Resource. And now Wade Wilson under My Roles, Azure Resources is showing eligible for the Enterprise Shared Services Group. He's actively a contributor. So there's uh, little buttons over here for your eligible roles. I can just go ahead and click Activate. 
Remember, I didn't have to MFA when I logged into the Azure portal. So we see up here, additional verification required. Click to continue. So here's the MFA challenge. So let's click activate. And you see that says the request is pending approval. So I'm not an owner of this subscription yet. Uh, here in a few minutes, I'll get an email saying, hey, do you approve this role? And then it'll show up on my side of the portal well, from an administrative side. Go in here to privilege identity management. Approval requests. So as an administrator, you can click approve requests and you'll see a queue up here. There we go. So we can see Wade Wilson's request for owner permission and we can see the details, start time. Uh, so we can go ahead and check this, click approve. Um, Wade needs to do something that needs Owner. Testing the process. So let's go ahead and confirm that approval. So now Wade is approved. So we should see we refresh. There we go. So now we have owner in an active state. Uh, but it has an end time over here and we can click deactivate early if we really needed to. Uh, so say, you know, we're active for eight hours, it took us one and we're done for the day. We don't, you know, go ahead and click de deactivate. I do believe it has to be at least five minutes uh, from the time you actually elevated before you can first deactivate. Um, then you can go over here and, and see your expired assignments for things down the road too. So that's Microsoft PIM, you know, group binding, uh, you can you know, basically go through your hierarchy, bind all of your important roles, update your settings so that the approval processes and the workflow go the way that you want to. Um, just add the people that you need to for those groups. You know, just go through your standard onboarding process. You know, this department needs these groups, this department needs these groups. They're going to inherit their permissions. They're also going to inherit their PIM eligibility. And then you know, the approval processes and the justifications and the other workflows are going to give you a lot more automated of a process to be able to handle these types of elevations and know that they're only going to be an admin for a few hours, right? Uh, for super sensitive groups, global admin owner, I highly recommend using the approvers. Um, that way they're not going to actually get activated until somebody signs off on it. Um, but for things like one use case is uh, the virtualization guys might need virtual machine contributor and they might need Azure Arc contributor and they might need a uh, storage contributor. But every once in a while, they're going to find something that their standard permissions just don't cover and they need to do it. So maybe they have virtual machines, storage, Azure Arc contributor active, but they also have the ability to elevate to full contributor when they need to. That way they have a no shit button, right? Like maybe they're deploying something. Oh, this requires a permission that I could have never known about. Okay, well, they're not going to be able to update the profiles anytime soon. So let me go ahead and jump into PIM, elevate myself, do what I need to do. We know that those permissions are going to expire in a few hours. So that's the gist of PIM. It's a highly effective uh, tool to use in your identity and access management, your identity security strategy. Um, if you have on-premise Active Directory, it's almost a no-brainer to get a P2 so that you can get Defender for Identity. And as long as you have a P2, you get the risk analytics and privilege identity management with it. So you might as well take advantage of it. So I hope this video has been informative for you and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.